everybody, and welcome to Between Plays Stock Market Strategies. Today we have with us CEO John Pasalacqua from First Phosphate and uh, the new addition here, COO, CFO, Gary Cisco. How are you doing today, guys? Great. How are you? Thanks, Albert. Doing great. Thank you. And John, how are you doing? Yeah, all good. Thank you for having us, Albert. Oh, anytime, anytime. Super excited about the first phosphate and what's coming up. John, is it possible I can start with you? You know, um, I'd just like to ask you, um, you've had this new addition to the team, Mr. Gary Cisco, which I'm excited about, but could you like just give us some of the insights on um, why Mr. Cisco? Yeah, so so Gary Cisco and I have a very long term relationship where we've known each other for, for over 30 years. Um, I've worked on a lot of projects with Gary in different capacities, and um, you know I think that speaks volumes. You know nowadays uh, relationships don't last very long. We've had a very long relationship, and so um, you know I, there's nobody else that I would want uh, beside my side on on, on this epic journey. I need somebody that I can trust. I need somebody that you know we've been able to work with together. That we have fun. We enjoy it, and somebody who's got you know a very open mind to to, to doing things that are very different, very new. On the self confidence above all to you know not be scared to 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 go into new territory, but at the same time someone that comes to the table with you know ex extensive experience, uh, like Gary does. So you know very fortunate to have Gary with us, and I think it'll be an amazing addition to the team. It really signals to to our investors you know that we're we're moving into a new stage of the company. It's like you know you, you can have an idea, you can create it, but at a certain point uh, you have to manifest it, right? You have to manifest it, and you, you have to put it. Uh, in, you have to concretize it, and that's what Gary's here to do. Gary takes ideas and uh, he makes them real through numbers, and uh, you know it gives us the ability to communicate our ideas, to standardize them, to to get them to the market, to get them to the investors in, in ways that are obviously you know investable. That's very interesting, um, Gary. I'm going to throw the ball over to you right now. Uh, so welcome, welcome to the show, uh, welcome to First Phosphate. Uh, so, Gary, could you just tell us a little bit about yourself so that that way uh, everybody that's watching this uh, video uh, learns about who you are and uh, what you bring? Sure. i am uh, go back and uh, keep it relevant to, to First Phosphate. I started as a chartered accountant here based in Toronto. I cut my teeth with Price Waterhouse and was there for a little while and then uh, went into the, the publishing trade show side of the uh, my first foray into the international markets with the largest publishing company in the world, Reed Exhibitions, has was their trade show division. So uh, that's really where I got the exposure. I was there for a little over seven years and got my international exposure. I, I started out in Canada, then Mexico, and then uh, the U.S. Uh, and ended up uh, as a CFO for North America. From there, I, I uh, came back to Canada and I uh, ran business development for three years. Uh, that's really where John and I uh, met and um, focused on, on uh, you know, launching you and creative opportunities. And, you know, we got out of that traditional CFO role and really in more of an operational uh, business development site and brought a lot of uh, new ways of doing things and thinking out of the box. And, uh, we were very successful. We had the fastest growing division in the three years that we ran that. Um, when I left, I, uh, I left because the internet, internet was quite transformative and a group of us went out and st um, bought out a company and, and turned it into the largest uh, trade show registration company, one of the top three, certainly in North America. Um, and then uh, I exited that business in the early 2000s for, uh, to, to private equity. I, I then uh, started my own firm and uh, was working with Canadian-based companies that wanted to either grow regionally, domestically, or internationally. And I've uh, got exposed to a number of, of vertical markets, technology, mining, uh, were really kind of the forefront, uh, some marketing opportunities, social media, and, uh, and uh, had some of the fastest growing companies in Canada on my, my, uh, my client list uh, when I was acting in a CFO or an operational activity. And also through that, that, those efforts, I ended up working uh, and, and growing some of my clients out into the international markets, uh, North America, Europe, uh, got extensive experience in it, uh, working with groups out of India and some of the Asian markets. So John uh, recently called me uh, and said, hey, I'm doing some really cool stuff in the mining sector. And I said, oh, that's funny. I've you know, got some uh, touch points there uh, on the gold and the phosphate side uh, out of the United States and some 
golding uh, gold mine opportunities that I was uh, brought in to evaluate in on the west side of Mexico in Mazatlan and uh, so we 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 got chatting and and uh, you know it was seemed to be a really exciting opportunity I was so excited at what John had done in Quebec right. and I saw the vision and he was he laid out the value chain and you know I've got some deeper um, industry experience on the automotive side so we we start really talking and collaborating around that whole side and uh, he felt that uh, we we got we got excited about uh, a lot of things around what first fast first fast state was doing and so uh, I said uh, you know this is this is really exciting John asked me to come on board and the rest is history that's why I'm here first phosphate is very exciting and um, you know what before we pass this over to John to wrap it up I have a very specific question for you Mr Cisco after some research and you just mentioned it yourself uh, experience in the automotive industry. Can you tell us like what this brings towards first phosphate? You know, um, what can we tell everybody out there? What can we expect from all that experience? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I've been uh, in, I've, I've been in, in the automotive sector and have a clear understanding of how it's transformed over the last six to seven years. Um, and more on the front end side with the body and white sections and dealing with the tier one and the OEMs, uh, the Magnus of the world, the Fords, the General Motors, and and working with uh, okay, with a Canadian based company that was was uh, was selling a lot of the front end body and white welding equipment, and they were uh, they're very uh, entrenched in the North American market. So I got exposed to that industry and saw how how new product from the automotive sector comes to market and the, the timelines and how they they transform uh, their technology on the engines and the body and how a lot of transformative technologies come into that sector. Also, what many people may not realize, but the automotive sector is probably one of the largest, if not the largest uh, uh, sector vertical market in the world. Yeah. So many jobs are, are or ancillary uh, industries are, are are reliant on the automotive sector, and that's why it's so strategic to many countries. Certainly in Europe, India is now becoming a player. You can see the cars that are coming out of China, uh, Japan, uh, Brazil is now becoming a player. So that sector kind of drives a lot of technology. It's really an exciting sector to be involved in and understand how it transforms. And and as they were starting over the last three years, uh, they had to actually stop a number of projects that were geared around traditional base automotive manufacturing and uh they i, I think that that everybody was was surprised at the the manner in which the ev electrical market uh around battery technology was taking off that they had to start transforming how they were taking some of these to market like ford for example split out their their whole company into two major divisions you know the traditional manner in which cars come to market and now the whole ev division and uh, you know tesla story i mean that that's well known yeah. so i understand uh how what's going on in the automotive sector uh, in, a, in a in a robust fashion so from a from a first phosphate perspective I, I believe we have access to some of the the most transformative minerals that are going to be needed in the new uh, batteries that are coming to market. A lot of it is based on old technology or technology that is uh, in, in the Asian markets that's coming into North America. We all the geopolitical environment speaks for itself. Um, but uh, you know, at high level, I you know we we kind of know the value chain. And the whole logistical chain of, of bringing that to market, and and a lot of that tier one and OEM groups are starting to look at a whole ecosystem as opposed to just relying on 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 their suppliers in a traditional faster fashion. Uh, and, and that's really what I bring in to uh, to first phosphate on a number of fronts, particularly in my CEO role, understanding that whole ecosystem completely. Uh, in, in a complete fashion, and how do we bring our, our products to market as quickly as possible, leveraging uh, you know new ways that we can we can uh, transform our our minerals into usable products for the marketplace. Wow, that's invaluable experience. That's that's incredible. Um, thank you so much for that, uh, Gary. Uh, John, um, one last question for you, please. We'll wrap this up. Um, can you give us just an update on where first phosphate is at the moment and what's going on in the near term? Yeah, so a lot of that, obviously, is, uh, we're preparing a corporate update, uh, which will soon be available to the market. So a lot of that will be in the corporate update. Obviously, you know, a public company, I don't, uh, I'm not able to to speak to that at this moment. Yes. But generally, you know, what 
what, what we're what we're what is known publicly is that you know we're working towards on a number of fronts. La Calorinal is uh, right now going through a PEA. We hope our PEA study to be ready by the end of this year. Um, we're going to be releasing a final drill results from Beijing La Marche. Uh, we already released uh, two very good uh, sets of drill results. The finals will be in here in the coming weeks. Um, and we're hoping to move that property to a 43101 uh, technical report by early 2024. Um, you know, we're also working um, to create a, you know, a, a, to pilot out our uh, phosphate concentrate to show how that's done to the marketplace and to prepare a sample uh, to go to prey on our major strategic partner uh, for the, you know, the sample production of purified uh, phosphoric acid that will then go into some battery cells that we will be making with um, that LFP cam and LFP battery cells that we'll be making with uh, um, Intervolves Power Limited or other partner in the UK, just to show the whole process, how you go from mine all the way to, you know, a battery cell in pilot. So that's really important that that would happen probably sometime in, in 2024. Um, you know, we continue to to, to look towards, uh, you know, refining our secondary recoveries of, of, of iron and titanium the products that are usable for the uh, manufacture of LFP uh, battery. And obviously, you know, we're still, uh, you know, very active on, on the exploration front from some of our blue sky properties. Um, that's it in a nutshell, but, uh, you know, a corporate update will, will, will be taking care of all of this very shortly. And I, you know, I would, uh, would urge, um, you know, your listeners to, to listen to that once that's ready to, to read and to listen to it. Yes, absolutely. Um, so that would conclude uh, the show today. Thank you so much, John. And thank you, Gary, for being here. So that'd be John uh, Pasalacqua, CEO of First Phosphate, and CEO, CFO, Gary Sisko. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you on the next show. Between Plays, it's the journey and what you do between where you are and where you want to be. Research, prepare. Disclaimer, Between Plays has a contract with said company in this video at the time of recording. Between Plays only takes contracts with companies we believe have an opportunity to deliver a product or service based on our own research. That being said, always do your due diligence. Seek professional financial analysts when investing. This video is for entertainment, educational, and formative purposes. See description for more information. Between plays. Bridging the gap between companies and investors.